اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم I seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan, the rejected. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ Peace be unto you, all of you, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Today's topic is what Al-Quran says about Ilhaz. The better Arabic word would be Aliha in Arabic. I've Latinized as in English, like we add S to Muslim, which is an Arabic word, Muslims. I have added an S to Ilhaz. Basically in Arabic is Ilha, a plural would be Aliya, translated as gods, small g-o-d-s, gods. Aliya or Ilhaz, meaning gods, small g-o-d, gods. And Allah, the creator, the nourisher, the sustainer, the evol evolver of the worlds is God, translated capital G O D God in singular. Capital G O D God in singular. Ladies and gentlemen, before I speak directly on to the subject and what the Quran has to say about these gods, Ilhas or Aliyah or Allah, I would like to give you in my own words a comprehension and understanding what you are going to hear. First of all, I would like to bear witness La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah wa khatam al nabiyyin meaning there is no God. There is no God except Allah, the Creator, and Muhammad is the Messenger and the Seal of the Prophets. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Further, I bear witness, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is the messenger and the servant of Allah. Ladies and gentlemen, the lecture by itself is an introduction to God's, the Ilhas and the real Allah. So it will be a very unique for most of the people in the audience to an introduction because this is the job of the messenger to introduce to you the Allah, the Creator, which was introduced to you in all time through Muhammad, Messenger of Allah. I, as a layman, as a human being, is trying to follow the example of the Prophet Muhammad and all the prophets. So it should be very clear in your mind that it was the messengers in all time have been introducing Allah, the Creator, to mankind. I am following their footsteps as a man. I am no more and nothing but a man. First of all, I would like to tell you, like if I personally write an autobiography about myself, an introduction to my personality, myself, what I am going to write as I see the world, as I see the world and I see the environment and about myself would be an autobiography of Muhammad Sheikh. But at the same time, if people around me, close associates of, of me, they also write something about me, would it be similar? I would like to ask the question from the audience. Would it be similar what I write about myself and what people are going to write about me? Would be similar? Thank you. Similarly, the Creator Allah Almighty, He Himself has sent a book, Quran, as a revelation of Allah 
to mankind describing his attributes his personality himself is describing who is allah what are his attributes and how and how he sees the world and how did he make it that means the quran is the book of allah in which he describes himself he describes himself and at the same time he describes the universe because the universe is the creation of allah so the real allah you can come to know through the messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him and the attributes of allah the names of the allah in the quran the word of allah so the word of allah is in the quran so quran the book of allah is the autobiography from allah the same allah people are writing about the same allah so ladies and gentlemen when people are writing about allah can never can never be same what allah himself has written about his personality in the book of allah can never be you must understand this the personality of allah which you people mankind are trying to write about allah can never be same as to what allah has written in the book by himself the quran so ladies and gentlemen this is why the religions occurred there are different religions in the world people mankind are trying to portray and understand allah through their intelligence through their intelligence and through their emotions giving pictures giving their opinions about allah allah can speak for himself he doesn't require your understanding to allah so that is the difference you have to understand how the lecture will go on one you will see the picture the truth the truth from allah and one the picture of man the picture of man of the same identity allah so ladies and gentlemen allah is described in the quran by his names by his attributes or character traits what is allah in the quran when i read the ayahs but at the same time man has given the same allah made the same allah as an idol because he doesn't communicate through the quran he himself think he knows allah and he's trying to understand the god or allah through his emotions through his own emotions he's trying to understand allah through his own emotions and intelligence and he's trying to write books his own image so the same allah you will see the two pictures of the same allah almighty one is the reality one is the image or idol and that idol in all times are depicted by various religions and at the same time it is portrayed as a physical star carving of stones in the world so ladies and gentlemen if you open the booklet where certain page number 7 i suppose the heading is beware of the names of partners idols false gods in the worship of allah with allah meaning mankind's emotions mankind concepts his own visualizations his own opinions about the creator his own imaginations his own speculations about the creator beware of the names of the partners idols false gods in the worship with allah the quran speaks about those idols in various surahs and ayahs i have given you these few references and we will analyze so in surah surah al-nur 
71 surah and ayah 23 in english it is love and in arabic is wadda the first ideal that mankind has been taking as an idol or an, a, a name given to allah is wadda I will go into detail the translations and explanation, but first I'll just read the words. So in Surah al nu 71 Surah, Ayah 23, Wadda, that is translated as love. And in Surah al najm 53 Surah and 19 Ayah, Lat, would be if and buts. Al-Najm, chapter 53, ayah 20, Manat, another idol, translated as alas, or longing. And in Surah Al-Najm, 53, Surah, ayah 20, Uzza, honor. Al-Furqan, chapter 25, ayah 43, Hawa, desire. Al-Nu, 71 Surah, 23 Ayah, Yaghus, seek aid, Yaghus, seek aid. Al-Nu, 71 Surah, Ayah 23, Nasr, Vulture. Al-Nu, 71 Surah, 23 Ayah, Yawuk, Delay. Al-Nu, 71 Surah, 23 Ayah, Suba time or hour in the in the urdu it would be mohabbat for wadda love and lat ka kash kash lata manat is mannate mannate tamannae uzza izzat hamari izzat uzza Hava khwaishat khwaish Yaghus madad Sahara Nasar gid Yaouk dher karna rukavte dalna Suba ghadi aur wakht Now ladies and gentlemen These words I have just read the Arabic I, Arabic words and the translations on the following page the meanings and little explanation are given and we will analyze one by word the first idol is what the love you will again and again hear in the world love is God God is love. Allah is love. Again and again you will hear in the big, big captions trying to emphasize that Allah is love. Because love is an emotion of man provided by Allah. Allah gave these emotions to man for a certain purpose. We put this emotion that God is love. You have to love God. Love is God. You don't have to work anything. It's just love. It's just an emotion. And in Arabic, wudud is loving. An attribute which Allah is loving, not love. Love is just an idol. So generally, Allah has given this emotion to man. It's just love. But when it becomes an idol, and how it becomes an idol, you have to understand this. Allah has given us intelligence and emotions. You have to keep a balance. A normal human being is considered in balance when he controls over emotions and use in his life as, and uses his statements and intelligence as well. But when at any time a person, man or a woman is infatuated to an extent when love, the emotion of love takes over him, the emotion of love takes over him, it becomes God. 
because trust God means that who controls our minds. Allah controls our minds. Similarly, when this emotion captures human intelligence, it start controlling your mind. That in the emotionally you are worked up, you lose your intelligence. It acts as a God. Love. It acts as a God. You don't use your intelligence. What Allah tells you how to control your emotions, how and where there is a limit of love, and if you surpass that limit, so you lose yourself and you start working under the influence of love. You give your life for love of the country, love for your mother, love for your husband, love for your children. Yes, you can love them. You can love them. But you cannot surpass the law of Allah in that love also. When you surpass the law of Allah, you are carried away by emotions. So in generally you will notice people will speak to each other that this gentleman is under emotional unbalance. He is under the influence of love at the moment. He will not understand any logic and reason. So that is what I am trying to explain. When you are under the influence of love or any emotion, you lose yourself and it acts as a God to you. So love becomes God. So people say God is love. This is first explanation to the word Wadda, love and idol of man. It is an emotion when it is controlled. But when you lose yourself, it acts a God to you and then you start following the emotion. It acts on a God. That is the first explanation to, to love. The second is Lat. Would be. Would be is in the world if and buts. In English, would be, would be and if and buts. To every situation, whenever you will note there is a logical argument among people on different issues and when the person is convinced, he's no, he has no answer. So he will use this word. Remember this. I agree to what you are saying so and so, but he will bring his butt because there is no way out. He will bring his butt just because if and but is his God. He will never agree to what is, which is fact. He will use if I would have done this, I would have done this, then this I was not, I would have been not in this problem. But I did not do this because this. So on any situation in life, people are thinking about their past, whatever the wrongs they did in the past, and they keep on thinking, reminding themselves, not working on it, reminding themselves, if I had not done that at that time, if I would have been doing this, I would have been the Prime Minister of the world, or the, I would have become like this. You know, a desire of the past, which is not to be changed, you keep on thinking of the past, and you're trying to improve, you don't do anything about it, you just think and you start using if and buts, thinking process. You can use this thinking process for analyzing a thing and come to a conclusion. But if you use this if and buts against the laws of Allah, it becomes God. And you don't attain anything in life, you're always confused. A man who's, who's involved in if and buts will never be able to establish anything.